uh, uh, chapter 16, 33. You go ahead and open there. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for encouraging us today in your word. We thank you in the name of Jesus that my speech and my preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstrations of the spirit and the power, that our faith will not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. We give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Now, I'm going to talk this morning on how to be at peace in the midst of the storm. How to be at peace in the midst of the storm. Uh, how to be calm in the storm. And I, I want you to notice the verse. I want, I want to pull something out of this thing. Um, now, John 16, 33, that is not the King James Version. Um, John 16, 33, or go to 33, verse 33, in King James Version. Let, let me read it to you. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. That's what the John says, John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace, and the world you shall have tribulation. Now, here it is. These things, I want you to look at it. I want to show you something. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have. Stop right there. It says you might have peace. Notice the next uh, verse. No, no, the next sentence. And the world you shall have tribulation. Two things. Jesus says in me you might have peace. This thing is bouncing up here. The sound bouncing up here. In me, you might have peace, but in the world, you shall have tribulation. Why did it say, in me, you might have peace? In me, you might have. You might have, you might not have. You might have, you might not have. It depends on you if you're going to have peace. The Bible tells us how to get peace. The Bible says his peace is multiplied us through the word. In me, you might have peace. Now, I know, every, I know a lot of people that's in him. They know him, but they don't have no peace. Do you know some of those people? I mean, they belong to God. They're Christians, but they, they've been through so much. They just don't have no peace. And Jesus says, in me, you might have peace. But, and so it's up to you. But in the world, you shall have tribulation. And that's not up to you. You're going to have tribulation. You shall have tribulation. And me, you might have peace. In me, you might have peace. But in the world, you shall have tribulation. Now, the message Bible says, I've told you all this so that trusting me, that's the secret where peace comes from. Trusting God is where peace comes from. So, if, if I don't trust God... I won't have peace. Now, I've told you all this so that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured deeply at peace. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties, but take heart, I've conquered the world. So in the world, you're going to have tribulations whether you're a child of God or not a child of God. You're going to have difficulties whether you belong to God or you don't belong to God. You're going to have those things. You can't change it. You will go through the storms of life. But in me, you might have peace. It's according to what you do. If you trust him. Matter of fact, it's connected to James chapter 1 verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into Tempta diverse temptations or testings and trials. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work of patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. As I said before, years ago, I didn't quite understand that. When he said, count it all joy, when you fall into diverse temptations, 
Testing and trials. You know there's no joy when you lost your job. There is no joy when you have been a bad, have received a bad report from the doctors. There's no joy in that. There's no joy when you ride in the storm. What you count joy is your faith. The, because the trying of it, count it all joy because the trying of it, which is your faith, work of patience. It gives your faith an opportunity to believe God and get it developed. God is not sending the storms to us to develop us, to improve us. That is not develop us. What develops us is what we do in the midst of the storm itself. Now, what is a tribulation? What is testings and trials? What is tribulations? I think this is very simple to understand. Maybe you lost your job or your family. Oh, that's a, that's a terrible a uh, 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 test. Uh, that's a terrible uh, 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 tribulation. That, that's an awful storm. Maybe, maybe you caused it. Maybe you didn't cause it. But it's a storm that you go through, and, and maybe, maybe bills are piled up, and maybe you lost your job. Since you lost your job, you don't have no income coming in. So that's a test. That's a trial. Uh, 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 maybe, uh, maybe you had a bad report. The, the doctor says that you're you're in very serious condition. This is what you have. Maybe it's a bad report. And and, and maybe you have uh, health problems. That's a terrible uh, a disease. Maybe it may be a problem in your family. And, and the list goes on and on and on. And even through all of that, even through all of that, the Bible says count it all joy. It is not talking about what I just got through telling you. That's not what you count joy because there's joy in that. The joy is your faith because faith looks beyond all of this and sees the end results. Amen. Through faith, the worlds were framed by the Word of God. My world is framed by the words that I speak. Are you listening to me? And so, therefore, I frame my world by the world that, 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 I, that I can speak his word. And that gives me peace. When I look beyond the storm, it gives me peace. When the doctor gives, gives me a bad report, I look beyond what it says and look at the word that said he's the God that heals me. That gives me peace. When the income, is, I don't have no income coming in. I'm doing all I know to do. I look beyond the storm of lack and I see the end results that says my God will supply my every need. That's what peace, that's how peace comes. It comes by the word. That's why Jesus says, in me you might have peace. Now, what are you going to do when the power, authority, and the resources are available? In me... You might have peace if you take advantage of the power, the authority, and the resources that's been given to you. I'm going to have peace if I take advantage of the authority, the power, and the resources that's been given to me. That's how I have my peace. In me, you have power. In me, you have authority. <laughs> In me, you have resources, amen, available. We're going to talk uh, a, a little thing, a little about this morning about the power, the authority, and the resources in order to have peace in the midst of the storm. Have you ever went through a valley and you wondered what the world, what I'm going to do? Have you ever been there? Have you ever gotten a valley and wondered how you got there? You woke up, you went to bed uh, praying in tongues, just rejoicing, and things that seemed to be okay the next day. I mean, here you are in the valley. Seemed like everything came against you. What did I do? Nothing. It's because you follow, you follow the Word of God, and the enemy is going to attack you to see how much Word you think you know. Amen. Amen. Glory be. Don't shout me down because I'm already preaching real good. Now listen, it's not going to get better than this. What could be better than the Word? We're going to talk about a little bit about the power, the authority, and the resources that's been made available for us so we can maintain that peace. See, you've got to maintain peace. It's not easy sometimes. You've got to maintain your car. If you don't change the oil every three or 5,000 miles, your car is going to let you know about it. You've got to keep the oil changed, get it maintained, and keep it drivable. 
Well, to keep the peace. I know, peace. He said, peace, I live with you. You have that peace. But I got to maintain my peace because he'll keep me and peace, perfect peace, if my mind is stayed upon him. I have that peace. I got to maintain it. How do I do that? I got to count it all joy. I got to count it all joy. Knowing this, I know what the, I know how it's going to turn out. I read the book, I read the end of the book, and it says that I win. I win. God always calls me to triumph. No matter what you go through, God's going to bring you out of it if you just trust Him. And don't give up and trusting Him. Now, He says these words that I have spoken unto me, un unto you. These words have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. So the words was given so we can have peace. Let me say that again. These words have I spoken unto you that you might have peace. But it's up to you. You have the authority. You have the power. You have the availability. You have the resources to maintain your peace. Amen. Amen. Turn to someone beside you and say, are you listening to him? Or say this, or are you sleeping? Okay. Now, uh, this is one of my favorite, many, I mean, a lot of scriptures are my favorite. But Matthew 7, 24, I'm going to approach this in a little different area, a different way. Let's keep this in mind. First of all, uh, what is authority? Authority is a command. It's control. It's, it's determination. It's a, a mastery. It's domination. It's might. It's power. It's force. It's rule. It's weight. It's supremacy. That's you and I. We have that God-given authority to, so we can walk in peace. Now, remember what Jesus says, these things have I spoken unto you. Now, notice Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. Now, let's, let's, let's say it this way. Therefore, whosoever, or you, now I want you to look at the scriptures. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. In other, in other words, who is acting on the power, the authority, and the resources available, that man, I will liken him to a wise man who is acting on the power, the authority, and the resources available to build his house. I will liken him to a wise man which built his house on the rock, which is the power, the authority, and the resources available, which is the word. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and the beat upon thy house. And it fell. Now, that was the testings in the trials, right there. That, that was the testings in the trials. And the rain descended. And the rains descended. The bad day report descended. The bad news descended. And the broken homes came. And all the bad news came. And the lion devil began to blow. And the wind began to blow. And beat upon that man that was acting on the power of the authority and the resources available. And upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded on the authority, the power, the resources of the Word of God available to him. Therefore, his house didn't fall. He maintained his peace right in the midst of the storm, right in the midst of the rain, right in the midst of the flood, right in the midst of the wind that blow, right in the midst of the testings and the trials and the heartaches and the broken home and the, the finances gone and everything turned sour in his family and his life, but yet he remained standing because he took available to the word of God and hold and held fast, and that was a wise man. His house did not fall. And I declared 
decree that your house, I don't care what you go through, your house will not fall. The winds may blow, it may look impossible, but the Bible says what is impossible with man is possible with God. I don't care what you have been through, I don't care how bad it has been, I got good news for you, you're going to make it through because the Bible says though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you may go through it Keep your eyes focused on the prize, the winning prize. That's why you can say, I can do all things. God always calls me to triumph. I don't know about you, but I'm about to get excited. Glory be to God, amen. Glory to God, amen. Wow. The word of God is shut up my bones like fire. Glory be to God. When you see these things come to pass, you look at the storm no matter, no matter how big it is, you say in the name of Jesus, this too will pass. I see the other side. I see the other side. And the other side, you know, Jesus one side, he told his disciples, he says, let us go to the other side. Remember that story? They got in the boat and started to the other side. And what happened? It began to rain. I mean, the storm came. Remember that? The storm came. They're in the boat. The boat about to go under. I mean, the flood, it was bad. bad they were in bad shape. Jesus was asleep on the pillow. But you know what? Jesus is not asleep now. But when he was here, he had a physical body. He had to take naps. And, 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 and so if I go home and take a nap, I'm just following Jesus' footsteps. <laughs> but Jesus never fell asleep in church. <laughs> I thought I'd add that in there. Kind of, kind of bring you back. Hey, he don't go to sleep in church. <laughs> and But the disciples, uh, he told the disciples, let us go to the other side. Right in the midst of the sea, the storm came and the disciples came to him and said, don't you care that we perish? It had to aggravate Jesus. What do you mean do I care? I told you, let's go to the other side. First of all, he went to the bow of the ship, said, peace be still, and there was a great calm. He told his disciples and said, you cowards, didn't you not believe what I said? They had no peace because they didn't take advantage of what he said. They didn't take advantage of the power, the authority, or the resource available. And Jesus was the resource. They could have made it. They could have stopped and said, hey, the master said, we're going to the other side, so be still. It would have happened. They, took, they could have took control. Amen. But notice, now here's the foolish man. And everyone who heard the same messages, and everyone that went to the same seminars, and everyone that heard the same messages about how to overcome, and all those that heard the same message on how to receive peace in the midst of the storm, all of those that heard the same sayings and don't do them and don't take action on the power, the authority, and the resources they heard that Sunday morning shall be likened to a foolish man. Now, when you leave this place, are you going to leave wise or foolish? Which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended. Here comes the bad news. Here comes the bad reports. <laughs> and here comes the home, the laws. I mean, everything that fell apart. And the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon the family. And it fell. And great was the fall of it. Because he was not acting on the power, the authority, and the resources available. So yes, you can have peace in the midst of the storm. Have you ever, you know, it's amazing how the devil will come to you in the midst of the storm and say, you're not going to make it this time. You say, devil, shut up. <laughs> you have right. 
You're right. I'm not going to make it. I've already made it. I've already made it. Not going to make it. I've already made it. My faith, I've already seen the end results. I see myself healed. I see myself blessed. I see myself above and not beneath. The head, not the tail. Amen. Are you listening to me? You're going home already. Now, Romans 8, 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, to be spiritually minded is to use the power, the authority, and the resources available. That's to be spiritually minded. I like to be around people that has that spirit of faith. That spirit of faith. That spirit of, go get them. That spirit, you can make it. That spirit, you're blessed. Amen. Amen. I, I want to be during that time when I'm going through a storm, I want to be cheered. You're going to make it. Not be criticized. The two C's. One C is cheer, the other one's criticized. You don't need criticism, you need to be cheered. And have it all, and encouraged, and have it done all to stand stand. Now, <laughs> Now, this is very interesting. You know, it's, it's amazing. Like she said, you know, sometimes you can murmur and complain, and, and you'll be sad. If we murmur and complain, we're going to be sad. If we murmur and complain, we're going to remain. And, 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 and sometimes people just can't handle a little test, a little tribulation. Uh, okay, uh, I don't know what to do, you know. I got a cold. I don't know what I'm going to do. I got a cold. I got a little headache. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, 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 I broke my toenail. What can I do? I mean, just over little tests and trials. And Paul, have you read what Paul went through? Let's put you and I in this situation. There in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, <laughs> the message Bible. It says the message Bible. Now listen. What Paul says, I can't believe, I'm going to add some to this, I can't believe I'm saying these things, he says. I can't believe I'm saying these things. It's crazy to talk this way. But I started, I'm going to finish. I worked much harder, been jailed more often. Have you been jailed lately? Beaten up more times than I can count. Some of you haven't been beaten up one time. And at death door time after time. Man, you talk about a bad, uh, uh, he's had a bad day. And this happened more than a day. This happened over a period of time with him. I've been flogged five times with the Jews, 39 lashes. Wow. I've been beaten by Roman rods three times, prevailed with rocks once, not just broken toenail. He's going through some stuff. I've been shipwrecked three times. I've been immersed in the open sea for a night and a day. Wow. In hard traveling year in and year out, I had to ford rivers, fend off robbers, struggle with friends, struggle with foes. I've been at risk in the city, at risk in the country, endangered by a desert sun, sea storm, and portrayed by those I thought were my uh, brothers. Wow. This is just the beginning. I've known drudgery and hard labor, many a long and lonely night without sleep, many a missed meal, blasted by the cold, naked to the weather, and that's not the half of it. When you throw in the daily pressures and anxieties of all the churches, when someone gets to the end of his rope, I feel the desperation in my bones. When someone is duped into sin and angry, an angry fire burns in my gut. If I have to brag about myself, I brag about the humiliations that make me like Jesus. The eternal and blessed God and the Father of our Master Jesus knows I'm not lying. Remember the time I was in Damascus and the governor of kings, Augustus, uh, 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 posted guards at the city gates to arrest me. 
I crawled through a window in the wall, was let down in the basket, and had to run for my life. Can you relate to this? No, we can't relate to that. Did he have a tough time? Wow. Now listen to me. I'm talking to you. It may look like defeat. It may feel like defeat. It may smell like defeat. It may seem like defeat. Even the one closest to you tells you that you're not going to make this time. It is defeat. But whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? No matter what the doctors tell you, whose report will you believe? I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Wow. You know what Paul said, though, there in Philippians 4.11? For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. If you go back up, we're not going to, but uh, Philippians 4.8 talks about, about your thought life, whatever you think. Think on good things, lovely, they're being report, think on these things. He said, I've learned, I've learned how to be content. Or, I've learned how to have peace. I've learned it in my thought life. I've learned to have peace in my thought life. Now, i tell you what, he has some thoughts. See, you can't help these thoughts that you're going to have. But they don't have to move in with you and live with you. You can't help if a bird fly over your head. But they don't have to build a nest there. The devil wants to build a nest on your head and tell you all the bad things you are. and You're not going to make it. Amen. You stand up tall and say no. Maybe Paul says, maybe he had this, if that song was uh, back there, uh, What's that song? Um, I, l- I love that song. We, I played it uh, the last night. You, you like it. Um, no matter what I'm thinking, no matter what. Uh, oh, uh, May, May Waker. The May Waker. Oh, May Waker. I mean, the May Waker. May Waker, is it? Way, way, uh, May, uh, May Waker. Okay. Uh, way Maker, yeah. May Waker, yeah. May Waker. May Waker. Way, way Waker. Way <laughs> Waymaker. I get in bed last night. I said, Alexa, play the song Waymaker. And she played it. I, I love that song, Waymaker. Maybe, maybe Paul, going through all of this, he probably went to a place and laid down and says, uh, Alexa, play Waymaker. Even though, I don't, even though I don't see it, God's moving. Even though I don't feel it, God is moving. Paul understood that when you go through these things, he had to guard his mind. He's got to know. He had to know without a doubt that God was on his side. He had to know. I mean, supernaturally, God appeared to him in the light and just changed him. When God changed you, you know without a doubt that God has called you. God has anointed you for such a time as this. Amen. That you can have peace in the midst of the storm. You know, uh, I, I, was, I was raised up very uh, traditional. Uh, I was raised up religiously traditional. Religious. I, I'm not religious. I, I'm, I'm a Christian. Christianity is not a religion. And I, 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 was, I, I was raised up thinking that I, I didn't know how to have peace. That the storms of life, God sends the storms of life to you. I was raised that way. That God sends the, you might have went to the same church I went to. That God sent these storms to you to, to develop you and, and, and to uh, train you. And back then, I couldn't understand a Heavenly Father 
that would do things like that. I didn't quite understand. I, just, I didn't understand love. I didn't understand that he just didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't hear too many scriptures on John 10.10, 10, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, these storms that's taking place right now and, and, and uh, Puerto Rico and, and, uh, and all these other places, earthquakes, God's not doing that. Even in insurance policies, it has a list of all these things and at the bottom of small print says and other acts of God. Well, if it says a small g, that's okay. Small g is the devil is the God of this world, but not the God. And, and, and so I was raised that way that, you know, uh, how can you have peace when you think these storms are going to come? And, and uh, no, it's not the storms of life that makes you strong. If that was true, then all of us should be giants. I mean, if the, if the, I mean, all of us had our shares of storms. Come on now, you know what a storm is? Come on now, talk to me. You gotta, you gotta walk with me on this thing. Now, now talk with me. You know what a test is. You know what a trial is. Anything that brings harm, confusion, hurt—that's a storm. That the devil. Maybe you missed it, but yet maybe you opened the door, but thank God you can close the door and God can restore you back to favor. No matter, maybe if you cause your own storm, maybe because of what you said or what you did, but let me tell you what, God can pass over past what you did and what you said and what you got you, the mess you got yourself into. But I tell you what, God says, I am the God that will deliver you, giving thanks unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath delivered us from the authority of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. What you do, you don't run away from God. You don't run away from the church. Run to God. Run to the church because this is a place of refuge. I will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Under the shadow of His wings, I re rejoice. God is a place of refuge in times of trouble. He's Jehovah. He's Jehovah Raku. He's Jehovah Rekanu. Sikanu. Amen. Not reckon who he's a Jehovah seeking to him. The devil, he's reckoning who he want to reckon. He want to turn things around for you. But God will make it right for you. You know, <laughs> no matter what you go through. It's, see, it's what you do in the midst of the storm. See, the wise man did the right thing. He built his house on the rock. Now, I've heard this. You've heard this. Well, I built my house on the rock. The rock is Jesus. The rock is Jesus. Well, I've seen a lot of people that know Jesus, and they say that Jesus is the rock, but their house is all messed up. The fallen, the finances, is down. I mean, they lost everything, but Jesus is the rock. There's more than just Jesus being the rock. I know he's ahead. I mean, he's ahead, but it's what we do. The rock is the hearing and the doing of the word of God. Whosoever heareth these sayings in mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man that heard the word of God and did it. Heard the word of God and did it. And heard the word of God and did it. We don't like to hear that word did it. That means we got to do something. We got to do. I mean, I got to do something. I know it's all by grace. I don't have to do nothing. It's all by grace. Fooey, wooey, oh, you now, I thank God for grace, but thank God for my, But God has given me grace in order to do the Word of God. That's grace in action. When I'm able to do the Word of God and act on the Word of God and cast out devils and walk in my authority, that is the grace of God. The grace is God is not given for me to do nothing. I got to do something. That's why the Bible said, but be ye doers of the Word of God. And here's only glory be to God. Amen. If the Bible says jump, I'm going to jump. The Bible says skip, I'm going to skip. The Bible says dance, I'm going to dance. Glory be to God. The Bible says run, I'm going to run. Amen. Be you doers. Let me tell you why we can have peace. 
Now we have more than one closing. If anyone tells you that they're closing, they're lying. But I'm getting ready to close. And that's true. We just need to change our thought process. When you go through these things, just count your faith joy. Now listen, if I got to count my faith joy, then I better build my faith up. I better build it up. Got to build it up on the Word of God. Let me just tell you why we can have peace. Just a few things. He said, Jesus said he'll never forsake me. That ain't getting me peace to know that. Sometimes I forsake myself. Come on. Sometimes you look bad, you look down on yourself. No, if you don't love yourself, you can't love nobody else. So he'll never forsake me. That's good news, isn't it? And, and it told me uh, not to fear. Remember Jesus says, these words that I've spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. And trust in me, you will have peace. So therefore, he told me not to fear. So I trust him. So I got peace. He said that he'll supply my every need. I trust him to supply my every need. He, he told me that angels of the Lord is encamped around about me. Wow. I believe that. Wow. Angels of the Lord encamped around about me. I believe that. So I've got peace. When I go to bed at night, angels of the Lord is encamped around about me. I don't have to worry about somebody breaking in. Uh-uh. I don't have to worry about the storms of life. Like that one big tree in my yard. That was a big tree. A huge dead tree. One man told me, he said, you better get that tree down. It's going to fall on your house. It's pointing towards your bedroom. And about four years ago, it's been about four years, hadn't it? Four or five years by now. A storm came in. This was supposed to be a, a big storm in, in, in Georgia. Pretty bad storm. And, and so before I went to sleep, I, I felt like I better, I, I, I pressed and said, Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that you sent your angels to guard my house. And it's, it's something, you, you know, the Holy Ghost knows uh, things ahead. And, and I said, Lord, concerning that tree, I said, Lord, if that tree falls, I said, if that tree falls, Father. I could have said, Lord, don't let that tree fall. But I said, Lord, if that tree falls, let it miss our house. Well, that night, that morning, about 2.30, we heard this loud thump. And I knew it was that tree. I went to the front door and I looked out. And this huge tree fell towards my house, towards our bedroom. Toward our bedroom, instead of hitting our bedroom, it went over and went beside the house, missed the house about a foot. If it came over, it, 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 we, we, we would not be here. It's a big tree. When the tree fell over, there was a big hole in the ground where it left it. And that's how big the tree was. Amen. So that gave me peace knowing that God sent his angels to watch over me. He sent his word to heal me. That gives me peace. Uh, he's my Lord. He's got great plans for me. That gives me peace. And he sent the Holy Ghost to live inside of me. Hey, I, I got peace. I, mean, I can't fail when I have all this good news. I mean, the, the, God, the, the word of God is the gospel, the glorious news. And when I hear what he said, no weapon formed against when we're prosper, will prosper, that, that's good news. And he said another place, he, remember Jesus says, these words that I've spoken unto you that you might help peace. And besides that, another word he said, he said, I will not let your, your foot will not be shaken. 
When sudden destruction comes, your feet will not be shaken. And he says, he's my shepherd. I like that. I, I, he's prepared a place for me in heaven. That means I'm going to heaven. So I got peace. I got peace because I'm not going to hell. He delivered us from darkness. I've been justified by all these you know. I've been justified by his blood. He placed the love of God on the inside of me. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Because of the joy that I have in his word. And I will close with this. This is called a li Living a Life of Joy, written. I, I wrote this August the 1st, just recently. August the 1st, 2019. And it goes, living a life of joy is a very easy thing to do. When you let the word of God dwell in you richly on the inside of you. And when the storms of life comes your way to bring you harm, you can count it all joy in the midst of it all and will be calm. Joy is a strength that will carry you through anything. It will give you peace and calmness under the shadow of his wings. The Bible calls it the joy of faith living on the inside of you. To assist you in the midst of the storm to always bring you through. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit to strengthen you in your time of need. It is through the joy of faith that will give you strength to receive. Joy will undergo hardships without giving in to the pressures of the enemy. It remains strong and connected to the word while faith walks in authority. God's word is your joy. It is the rejoicing of your heart. Because living a life of joy will cause all weaknesses and doubt to depart. Your joy is the quality or state of being strong in the midst of it all. And you're able to stand up tall with the joy of faith and, and you will not fall. With joy you have the ca capacity of endurance to resist any attack. And everything the enemy stole from you, your joy of faith will get it back. Joy is found in God's presence, His Word, and in Christ alone. This is the only way that you can resist the devil and continue to be strong. So keep the faith and let the joy be the master of your soul. Then you will enjoy life again as you let your faith and your joy take control. Take control. Amen. You get anything out of that? So uh, continue to walk and peace. Many of us, many of you have had storms. I've had plenty of storms in my life. Storms of people being critical of me like you. People are going to criticize you. They're going to condemn you. They're going, they're going to do mean things against you, say things about you. But what you do, you let it go and say, Father, forgive them for they don't know what to do because they can't see the world didn't give the peace to me. And people in the world can't take it from me. God gave me peace. And that peace, passive all understanding, to know that no matter what you go through, you're going to make it. What do you do when you're facing a situation? Uh, uh, that's a good time to laugh. I've been through some things and I just couldn't help just to laugh because I've seen the end results. Amen. Amen.